everyone, I'm Carolyn, and I have another As I See It video for you today. I'm feeling inspired. I saw a comment in uh, my comments about, but the prices of gas and the prices of food, and this is probably one of the most common things that I see as an excuse or a reason to vote for Trump. So I want to talk about that today. And yeah, you might be confused, like, what's going on, Carolyn? This has nothing to do with RV life. That's right, because you're not on my RV life channel. You're on my political channel called As I See It. But I hope you'll stick around because I want to talk about the high prices. I want to talk about the inflation that we have experienced under the Biden administration. And I want to hopefully give you some perspective on macro microeconomics and why prices are so high and what a uh, Harris presidency would look like as far as your pocketbook or your bank account compared to a Trump economy. We're going to talk about those things. But first, let's talk a little economics 101, okay? Economics basically is all about supply and demand. If you have a huge supply and a low demand, your prices are going to be low. Conversely, if you have a low supply, you don't have a lot of your widgets, and your demand is high, then the price of that is going to go up, right? So think about that for a minute. You have a million loaves of bread, and your demand for a million loaves of bread isn't very high. Then your they need to sell those million loaves of bread, right? Like we have to get rid of these and people aren't buying them. So we have to lower the prices so that people will buy them. And on the other hand, if you only have three loaves of bread and a million people want those three loaves of bread, they can charge whatever they want for those loaves of bread, right? That's how supply and demand works. So thinking about your groceries, thinking about your gas, when there's a lot of gas, and a little demand when people aren't driving as much, when they're not driving to work, when they're on lockdown, when they're not going to see their family and their friends or that going on vacation, there's a whole bunch of gas. People aren't buying it, so the prices are going to be lower. See where I'm going with this? So yeah, under the former administration, under the Trump administration, gas prices got really low. You know why? Because nobody was going anywhere. We weren't going on vacation. We weren't even driving to work. We weren't going out to eat. We weren't going to the gym because everything was closed down. So we had a huge supply of gas, oil, and not a lot of people buying it. So the prices were super low. As soon as everything opened up, when the pandemic got under control, th that shifted, right? Demand for oil. People were like, yeah, get me out of here. I want to go on vacation. I get to go to see, you know, restaurants and movies. And uh, I get to go see movies and go to restaurants and see my family and hang out with friends. So as the demand went up, because people were buying, 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 and the supply went down, prices went up. That's part of the reason. That's a very simplistic reason why gas prices went so high. Because all of a sudden, the demand was huge and production couldn't keep up. And so when there's a little bit of something and a lot of people want it, they can raise the prices. So that's why gas was so high. And this is not something that just happened in the United States. And I am using gas as an example right now, but this is true for everything from the baby formula I talked about in a previous video. There was a shortage of baby formula. There has been a shortage of, of just about everything. You know, we get... We don't grow all our own grains and all our own food either. A lot of that comes from overseas. And during the pandemic, everything was shut down. And there were literally shipping containers sitting at ports, sitting in warehouses, stuck on, on freight uh, ships in the ocean. They couldn't come into the United States from China. The supply chain issues that we had were real. So when things opened back up, everybody wanted to buy, everybody wanted to go out to eat, everybody wanted to return to normal, only kind of like on steroids, right? Because we'd been locked up for so long. So with the supply chain issues that we had after the pandemic, we couldn't get goods from 
the countries that were used to getting them from. The factories had been shut down, so there was no supply. They had to rebuild that supply, even with food um, that we, you know, because like I said, a lot of the food we get from overseas, a lot of our grains and meat even and things like that. So prices went up because demand went skyrocketed when we were all free to go out and do things again. And again, when you have a lot of people wanting a little bit of stuff, prices are going to go up. And this, again, was a worldwide phenomenon. This inflation spread around. The, there isn't a single country that I know of on the planet that didn't suffer post-pandemic inflation. Everybody had it, not just the United States. And let's talk about what Joe Biden did in order to stabilize the world oil industry. He released a bunch of our oil reserves. So we had a bunch of oil in reserve and he released it. He also started uh, opened, opened oil pipelines. We started producing more oil in this country than any time in history. That's a fact. I know. That's not what Trump is telling you. That's not what your right-wing news is telling you. And I'm going to put sources. You can do the research. Please do the research yourself. Joe Biden produced more oil than any president in history. And when he released those oil reserves, he helped stabilize the world oil market, bringing down prices for the United States. We had super high prices when things first opened up after the pandemic, and they've been steadily coming down and coming down and coming down. And they're pretty low today. I mean, I think I saw on under three dollars in my travels recently so they're definitely coming down this is just how world economics works it's supply and demand and that is a big part of the reason why prices are so high joe biden's american rescue plan put a lot of good policies and a lot of good money you know budgeted a lot of money to help get us out of that and crazy inflation and to help americans rebound from the super high inflation that was in fact affecting the whole world. And Joe Biden's American Rescue Plan has, in fact, made our economy the strongest economy in the world with one of the lowest inflation rates at this time than any country in the world. Better than Europe, better than Russia. For all of you who think you need a strong man, all of you who think being a dictator is so romantic, having a tough guy who's going to save the world. The dictators are, are, are definitely known to be so good for the people. Our inflation is better than theirs. Our inflation is better than China's. In fact, for the first time in recent history, we are on track to outpace China economically. Remember for years, there was the scare that Chinese, Chinese, China is going to become the economic superpower and oh, oh no, America is going to lose their superpower status. Well, no, we're back on track for being an economic superpower. Thanks to Joe Biden's American rescue plan and the policies that he put in place uh, to get inflation under control in our country. Inflation that again hit the entire world. And let me say it again, and I'm going to put sources below. Please research it. Don't just write me off as a liar because one person or one news source is telling you different. And you're like, ah, you're, who are you? Who are you? Well, part of my degree was in economics and political science and international relations. So I'm not just, you know, people think I'm just a homeless bum who rides around in an RV and doesn't know anything. Well, I, I, I know a few things. And yes, our economy has rebounded better and faster than any other economy in the world. But that's just part of the reason you're paying such high prices. The biggest part is because of decades of deregulation of companies and corporations. You know, it's interesting. Republicans keep talking about freedom. And what I see is a party that takes away our freedom the freedom to choose what to do with our own body, the freedom to have IVF, which, by the way, a bunch of Republicans voted against guaranteeing the right to IVF yesterday. They tell you, it's interesting, I, it, it's, that could be a whole other video, but anyway, the party who's telling you that they are all about freedom are taking away your individual rights right under your nose while giving more freedom to big, huge corporations who are gouging you. 
they have deregulated corporations. They have taken away a lot of the uh, policies and rules that help keep prices low. The antitrust laws, for example. Right now, 10 companies, 10, control almost everything we eat. Nestle, Pepsi, Unilever, Danone, General Mills, Kellogg's, Mars, and a few others. 10 companies control everything we eat. So when only 10 companies control what we eat, do you think they might have a lot of control over how much they charge? Here's another basic economic fact. More competition equals better prices for consumers. Think about that. Again, we've got a million loaves of bread and only one company has it produces that million loaves of bread. So they can charge whatever they want. If you want loaves of bread and only one company offers it, you're going to pay whatever they, they want to charge you, right? Think about Big Farm right now. Those who have patents on certain medications, they can charge whatever they want. The more competition you have, you have a million loaves of bread, you have a million people who make bread, there's so much competition, they need to sell that bread, they're going to bring their prices down because they want to sell their bread, right? Again, another basic economic fact. More competition equals lower prices for the consumer. When you have 10 companies that control all of your food, what do you think that's going to do to prices? Think about it. 10 companies control all of your food, all of your meat, all of your grains, all of your fruits and vegetables, everything. All of our food is controlled by 10 companies. What do you think that's going to do to prices? Tell me in the comments below. 10 companies equals higher prices or lower prices. And that's another big reason you're paying more at the grocery store. And when I'm talking about deregulation, I'm talking about basically getting rid of antitrust laws, right? The Interstate Commerce Act of 1887 started a shift from taking, regulating big business away from the states and into the federal government. And those laws over time have been done away with by different administrations, mostly Republicans. By the way, here's an aside for you. You want to hear, listen to a really interesting podcast. I, I want to do a video about this. It's called Master Plan, and I'm listening to it on iHeartRadio. It's all about the Powell memo. Oh my gosh, it's fascinating. Actually, I can't wait to hear the next episode, but it talks about how ba big business ha got together in order to create this whole, you want to talk about the deep state, big business got together in order to basically legalize corruption in politics. And that's how we got to where we are today. So big business doing away with all of these antitrust laws through lobbying and buying politicians and all the things they have done created an environment where today we have 10 companies who produce all of our food and therefore they can pretty much control the prices. So after the pandemic, we started seeing higher prices for everything in the grocery store. And that's what many of you are talking about. Well, why should I vote for Biden you know, well, you know, or Kamala Harris? Everything is so expensive. Well, part of the reason, besides the supply and demand, the other side of that is price gouging. While you are seeing higher prices... Because it, it initially started because of supply chain issues and because of inflation. But at the same time, when things started coming down, when supply chains started opening up, when production started ramping up again and supply started going up, do you think the companies lowered their prices because supply was going up? No. They were like, people are used to paying this, so we're going to continue to charge these high prices. Our stock value is going to go up. Our CEOs are making record, pro record incomes. They're getting these huge bonuses. Profits are uh, increasing exponentially. So you can't blame it on inflation when companies are seeing record profits while you're paying more at the grocery store. It's from price gouging, which kind of happened as a result of the inflation and the supply chain issues. The, the companies just never lowered their prices again once things started opening up. That is not Joe Biden's fault. Joe Biden, had, what, what, he can't 
if you want, you can't have a free market and then expect the president to step in and say you have to lower prices. You can't have both. You either want a free market economy, which means less regulation, less antitrust, allowing 10 companies to control all of your food and set prices. You either accept that, okay, I pay more at the grocery store, but that's the price of the free market. Or you say, yeah, you know what? Big, huge corporations should not be raking in billions in profits while I'm paying $10 for a gallon of milk. That's not right. You have to choose. You can't, you can't have both of those things. And if you want to pay less at the grocery store, the fact is you need to support regulations and, and antitrust laws. And you need to support politicians who also support those things, which are usually Democrats. Democrats, historically, here's another fact, the economy historically is better for consumers. Our national debt is better. Our GDP is better. All of those things are historically better. You are historically better off factually, on paper, in black and white, numerically, you are better off under Democratic presidents. But you listen to the people who want to keep you in line, who want to keep gouging you because they're owned by a big business. You would rather listen to them than look at the facts. They have sold you a bill of goods. They're lying to you because they are owned by big business who want to keep gouging you keep paying you low wages so they have cheap labor so they keep making more money. These high prices are not Joe Biden's fault. Again, you either choose, you're either on the side of a free market economy, which allows big businesses to charge you whatever they want for your groceries and your gas, or you say, yes, the federal government needs to step in and there need to be some controls on these huge corporations. But again, President Biden has no control. There is, there is nothing legally, constitutionally, that he can do to force companies to charge you lower prices. That's completely not something a president can do. But it is something that can happen over the long term if we vote in the right people who are going to start holding these big businesses accountable and start working for you instead of for these giant corporations. Does any of this resonate? Is any of this making sense to you? And again, don't take my word for it. I'm going to put links in the video description below with all my sources. If you don't like my sources, go find your own. Please do your research. Don't listen to me. Don't listen to Biden. Don't listen to Trump. Don't listen to Fox News or MSNBC. Go do your own research. That is what a rational, thinking, intelligent person does. Thinking, rational, intelligent people don't just listen to one person, one side, one news source, and run with what they feed you. I get my news, I've said this before, from dozens, dozens and dozens of news sources. And when I can, I go directly to the source. I go directly to the documents. So if you are leaning toward Trump because of your higher gas prices, which by the, again, are coming down, your higher food prices, think about what I have just told you, the real causes of those things. They are not Joe Biden's fault. In fact, 16 Nobel economists, as well as I think it was Goldman Sachs, Goldman Sachs, this huge financial company, along with the 16 Nobel economists are saying the economy, you, the average American, will be better under a Harris economy than a Trump economy. And in fact, after the debate, more Americans who were polled said that they believed uh, they would do better under Harris than they would under Trump. These are Americans who watched the debate, who, after listening to both sides, felt more confident in how Harris would handle the economy than in how Trump would handle the economy. According to AmericanProgress.org, Project 2025, which again has Trump's name in it like 300 times, which is was written by people who, who Trump hired to work with him in his first term, 
the Herod and uh, you know what I'll link that video I did a video about all of Trump's um, connections to the Heritage Foundation and Project 2025 and he's distancing himself only because of how unpopular it is. It's the only reason he's, he lies. He's lying about this too. So the Project 2025 policy, policy agenda includes a harmful set of proposals intended to increase Wall Street profits. So in, in when Wall Street profits increase, that usually means how do their profits increase? How, how does Wall Street make more money? usually by charging you more. There's an extensive, well-documented set of plans to overturn post-2008 uh, crisis, the, the whole huge um, housing market crash. Uh, they put policies in place to protect consumers after that. And it is well-documented in Project 2025 that they want to overturn those policies that will protect consumers, investors, and stable functioning financial markets. So basically, they want to be able to wreak havoc on the economy uh, at the expense of us and at the benefit of huge corporations. And let's talk last. The last thing I want to talk about is if you think that you are going to be better off under Trump, even though Project 2025 is taking away policies to protect you and protect your finances and your income and all kinds of things. Let's talk about tariffs. Trump is out there. Either he doesn't know how tariffs work, which again, Econ 101. You want to hire a guy to run the country who doesn't understand basic economics? That's a problem. So either he doesn't know how tariffs work or he's lying to you. Take your pick. But he keeps saying that the United States is going to make a whole bunch of money by charging taxes to countries who import goods and services. And as I said, er, mostly goods. And as I said earlier, we get everything from international suppliers, including a lot of our food stuff. Okay. So if he's going to put tariffs on everything, including your food, your cars, your clothes, your electronics, everything, we get everything from abroad. So yes, the part he has correct is that the United States imposes a tariff, which is a tax. Okay, you want to bring your goods into the United States, we're going to charge you 10% to do that, okay? So the company can either absorb that 10%, right, or they can pass it on to the consumer. What do you think they're going to do? Do you think China is going to continue to import things into the United States at the same price at the same price and cut into their profits? We just talked about how corporations aren't cutting in. Do you think Chinese corporations are any different? Do you think any other country that we get goods and oil and all the other things from, do you think they're going to absorb those profits? No, they pass them on to the consumer. Always, they pass them on to the consumer. They never, they never take a hit. It's all about profits. And especially now when we have corporations who only answer to shareholders, they don't care. They just want profit, profit, profit for their shareholder. They are not going to absorb these costs, period. I don't think ever in the history of tariffs has a country and their companies absorbed the cost. I don't think anywhere in history of companies, especially huge corporations, have they absorbed the cost? No, they pass it on to consumers. And if you think they're not going to pass it on to consumers, you're delusional as Trump is. They are going to pass it on. So yeah, when Kamala Harris says that Trump is basically going to tax you, that's what it means. A tariff while it looks on the surface like a tax to another country, when they pass it on to you, it becomes a tax on you. Think about like gas taxes, it, all of them. They all get passed on to you. So you are not going to be better off under Trump. You're not. We need to keep voting for people who want to put consumer protections in place, not take them away. One final thought I want to leave, and, and this is going to hit kind of hard, I, and I own that. It may not also be very kind, but, but I think it's true. When you look at everything that Trump represents in Project 2025 and the chaos that he has caused, and one more, one more quick fact, 
violent crime, murder, gun violence was exponentially worse under Trump. And again, put a source, a, go straight to the source of the government, the government agency that tracks those things. I'll put that below. Uh, violent crime, gun crime, murder was exponentially worse under Trump than it has been under Biden. So Trump wants to fear monger. He wants to scare you thinking that illegal immigrants are flooding across the border and they're raping and pillaging and hurting and beating your cats. The fact is we are, our crime rate is very low right now. And if you talk about uh, the crime rate of immigrants, it's even, it's, it's minuscule, tiny, tiny, tiny. So while Trump wants to convince you that the world is a big, ugly, scary place and only he can save you. That the economy is crap because Biden and Democratic policies are bad for Americans. Meanwhile, the reality is Project 2025 and Trump are bad for immigrants, bad for women. Women are dying, bleeding out in parking lots. How pro-life is that? When you're willing to sacrifice the life of a full-grown woman with kids and husbands and mothers and fathers and brothers and sisters. When you look at everything that Trump represents and taking away women's rights, rounding up immigrants into camps, what could possibly go wrong with that? All of the things that he represents, the violence, the political violence, the division. I mean, everything that this man embodies and your main concern is how much you pay for a gallon of gas or a loaf of bread? Sacrificing the lives and the safety and well-being of your fellow Americans? You're willing to sacrifice that for a few extra dollars in your pocket when you come back from the grocery store? Or you fill up a tank of gas? When I see or hear, yeah, I'm voting for Trump because the economy, because gas... You know what I hear? Me, 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 me. And fuck everybody else. Fuck LGBTQ. Fuck trans people who are suffering under this divisive rhetoric, calling them evil, drag queens, telling gay people they don't have a right to be married, telling women that even if you're raped, you have to carry your rapist baby. That if your father rapes you when you're 10, ah, it's God's will. That's worth paying a few dollars less for some bread? We are the United States of America. We are in this together. We have to live together and we can't live together when all of us when some of us aren't free the best way to get the freedom you want is to allow others to have it and that's worth a hell of a lot more than a cheap gallon of gas that's how i see it let me know how you see it leave your thoughts below thank you for being here if you like my content subscribe to my channel all right Breathe. We're almost there.